Hey y'all, I'm Ebony K. Williams here, host and attorney extraordinaire. Welcome to Holding Court, where we analyze the very latest in legal headlines, the ones that got all the streets talking. You know what we do? We dig deep into how the courts impact the culture. We break it down, going straight from gavel to your news feed. And every week, we keep it 100. Right, Dustin Ross? That's right. Dustin Ross, my love, how was your weekend? And did you did you get tea on this... Um, Epic Iron Mike Tyson fight. What's what's T on that? Yeah, I did. Um, first of all, it shouldn't have happened. That's the T on that. It says no reason. I was very uncomfortable watching that. Yeah. Um, there's an arrogance that Jake Paul kind of traverses the 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 boxing ring with that mm-hmm. I don't like. Mm-hmm. And I didn't like sitting up watching this young um white boxer fulfill his fantasy of beating up a black boxing icon champion world champion i personally didn't like the way that that looked Mm -hmm. i was hoping for mike tyson to obliterate and smash you know i really wanted to see blood but i didn't see that um i think he held up you know as well as we can expect a fucking damn near 60 year old black man with with extreme trauma to his body over years of boxing, right? So yeah, yeah but I did watch. I, I I did not watch it. Um, I wish it would not have happened either. You know, I so I grew up uh, in the HBO era. Okay, um, mm-hmm. so it was mm-hmm. it was always customary in my home growing up with Mother Gloria to have the popcorn ready, and we oh yeah, it was it was, it was prime time for the mic fight. Mm-hmm. You know, at the Ponderosa apartment. Huh. So to my point I'm making is that's a that's a moment. That's that's like you say, it's iconic. It's a core memory, quite literally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so to have that like, I don't know, kind of like reduced, I think is the word I want to use to whatever this spectacle was. And it and I mm-hmm. we all knew it was probably gonna be a spectacle at the onset because Mike is almost 60 years old. He's, you know, admitted that he, he was damn near on his last leg, quite literally, but literally, literally mm-hmm. before he started training for this. So it just wasn't set up, I think, to put an icon such as Mike Tyson in a great light. So I, I spared myself from viewing it. Um, and I, I didn't like the way it went, but it's kind of like this to survive what 10 rounds, um, eight, yeah, or whatever, mm-hmm. yeah, within you want. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, we're gonna just do that. Oh, oh, for sure, for sure. And anybody who says anything else, you ain't getting in the ring with him, yeah. And I'm glad that he got. Paid. I'm glad he got what he needed. Um, I think that's like a broader conversation for a different day. I really don't like Dustin that I'm having to see our icons um, have to still work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's something going yeah. on money wise and management wise. And I'm not pointing any fingers or casting any blame. But even Denzel said that recently, like after he won his Oscar, um, his his first Oscar, there was like 15 years where he was basically making movies to earn. You know, like mm-hmm. uh, Al Pacino wrote about that in his recent memoir. You know, there were so many films he has taken, even in this latter part of his career, that weren't shit, but he needed the money. So, uh, yeah. you know, I think that's what we saw this weekend with Mike Tyson. Needed the bag, needed the money. He got it. Let's let's move on. He got 20 and Jay got 40, right? I think it was something like that. That's what I read. Which I also yeah. don't like, by the way. I, mean, I, I scoffed and rolled my eyes. Yeah, who's watching that fight but for Mike Tyson? So what a Exactly. Wow. Anyway, you know, I really had no anticipation of putting another Sean Diddy Combs story on the docket, except for the facts keep facting. And so we we had to kind of go here again, jurors, before we could even get to this hearing, which we knew was coming. Prosecutors said they got something to say about it. Last week's episode, Dustin and I laid out for you, whether you like or don't like that they keep going up for these bail hearings. This is his defense team earning their keep um, and creating new arguments every time as to why he should be reconsidered for a uh, pretrial release as the, as is their job, right? What prosecutors say, wait, wait a minute, pump the brakes. Now this is fascinating, Dustin. Prosecutors are saying that Sean Diddy Combs is actively trying to obstruct justice from jail, that he is reaching out to potential witnesses and he is trying to influence public opinion. We all know he's set for trial May 25th, um, excuse me, May of 2025. So let's get into some specifics, though, right? We know that um, when they say he's trying to influence potential jury, I want to be clear as to what that looks like. Okay, so y'all remember it was um, it was his birthday, what, a couple weeks ago? Mm hmm. Yeah. So if you remember his children, I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. Quincy, for sure. I think the twins, maybe Mm -hmm. they all got into um, did a video, created a video. Um, to celebrate his birthday and yada yada yada. 
Well, the prosecutors are saying that this was all orchestrated by Sean Combs himself and that he is proactively enlisting not only his family members, y'all, but his children. Let, let's just be clear. Wow. Or, and, and some of them are minors to help him carry out a concerted effort, a social media campaign with the very clear intention of influencing potential jurors um, in this criminal proceeding. That Sean Combs has deliberately encouraged his children to post videos from their social media accounts showing them celebrating his birthday. And that after the videos went live, Dustin, Sean Combs from jail monitored the analytics, engagement, likes, comments, um, and then sat with, I don't know, legal team, family, you know, his, 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 his people and discussed the strategy. You know, what worked in the video, what didn't work in the video, and what can we do in the next video? What, what, what does Dustin Ross think about this? I'm tired, and I just don't understand why. Two things. Number one, I don't understand why he did it this way, right? Mm -hmm. I understand his his goal, but why? And number two, why are you doing it so sloppily, right? If you're going to put out a concentrated effort to try to sway public opinion, it shouldn't be traceable in this way. Mm -hmm. And number two, his children are getting on my fucking nerves. Christian Combs, okay, uh -huh. who is always dancing, even when there's no music playing, okay, and soft shoe jigging. I'm tired of him posting these videos saying that he would, and maybe this, for, I'm sure this falls underneath that net of, of things that he shouldn't be doing to try to garner oh, public yeah. uh, support or whatever. Uh -huh. Christian posted a, 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 he made a post saying that he, um, he was going to post good things that his daddy done. He's tired of everybody um, down to his daddy. He's he's going public with this girl and being seen and photographed out at dinners and in clubs. It's just all wrong. It's all wrong and it's not helping. And so I believe two things are happening here. Number one, I believe every word that they said when they reported Across, that he is. Yeah. He's doing that. And number two, his sons are young and dumb and they don't have life experience and, and, Christian and the twins have lost their and Quincy have lost their mom. Yes. So there's no other parent there guiding and offering suggestions and helping them make smart decisions that don't read as immature and sloppy. Yeah. It's a very serious case going on. People need to be serious and them kids need to shut up and go into hiding. That's what I believe. I agree with all that. And I, I want to say what's flagged for me on this. So for those that want to hold out the space for Puff having moral redemption, this mm -hmm. shit um, sets it back. Okay, I'm going to tell you why. Very specifically. Now, I've been a parent for about 15 seconds. <laughs> Don't worry about that. You're a beautiful, bouncing baby girl. That's right. But I'll tell you what I already know. And I didn't need to be a parent to say what I'm about to say. I just want to be very mm -hmm. like, straight up about it. But I will say mm -hmm. it's even more so true now that I have bought life earth side in this way and now that i am Talk about responsible it. for for life earth side in this way if i was up to some shit dustin you know the first person i would instruct with veracity to stand the fuck down the one you holding right now <laughs> uncle dustin and auntie so and so and so and so fight this fight you stay your motherfucking little ass over there that's you right. Far removed right. from even the appearance of collusion yep. or impropriety, liberty, yes. Andrea Williams. That's that's right. That is the first person. I don't care if I'm even right. I don't care that I'm right. I don't care that I'm innocent nope. because I so love and am so bound in a posture of protection of my child, mm -hmm. Dustin. Mm -hmm. You sit your fucking ass down over there in the corner, mm -hmm. read the mm -hmm. goddamn coloring books. Mm -hmm. <laughs> fuck up that's what you that's it it's that simple it it's that simple and like you said it's you protecting her yeah those children and your baby have a lot of life that's, left to live that's that 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 exists far beyond your situation the narcissism dustin in reeks. if you didn't think that if the video didn't sway you i'm talking about the one where he's literally physically beating and dragging cassie down the god beating the shit out of cassie yeah, yeah. Uh, i i think this is more evidence to me, this is mm -hmm. more evidence the fact that you are not telling your children to stand down is that in fact you are actively encouraging. Like, because that's what desperate narcissists do. 
They grab yep. any and everybody. And it's very similar to, um, this is why you're not supposed to try to save somebody drowning. Because, mm -hmm. and I know it's counterintuitive because we all want to protect the people that we love. But in do when people are in dire straits, as Sean Combs is currently in dire straits, um, he's going to take you down with him. Yeah. Me, the dirtiest thing you can do is take down your very own children along with you. That don't have nothing to do with this shit. Yeah. Yep. And why why attach them to it? As, as, as you said, as a parent, your your natural instinct should be to create as much space and distance between this damning, disgusting circumstance that that will have repercussions eternally, right, forever. You don't want those kids stained by this. Yeah, yeah let's, that's the height of let somebody else do it. So the fact that yeah. I agree with you, doesn't I, I believe the prosecutor's argument here that he is using who he thinks is most credible most believable, most pure in this circumstance to do some real nasty, dirty work here. I think y'all need to look at that. Look at that. Yeah, and the paper trail makes it even worse, right? Correct. It'd be different if we could attribute their posts to just heartfelt sentiments, but we can't. The 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 strategy that's being implemented here and applied is just crazy to me. Yeah, I think the prosecutors say it best, Dustin. The defendant has, quote, shown repeatedly even while in mm -hmm. custody, that he will flagrantly, heavy on flagrantly and repeatedly flout rules in order to improperly impact the outcome of this case. The defendant has shown, in other words, that he cannot be trusted to abide by rules or conditions. And again, we know this is classic narcissistic behavior. Uh, the rules don't apply to me. The rules are for y'all. The rules are for the common. Damn. They're not for me. Um, and What is say rules for thee, not for me, right? Right. Watch mm -hmm. what I say, not what I do. Okay. So, right. so that's it. Um, I do want to talk about this for a second. So we'll know more about this. Um, this third bond hearing is set for later on this week here in Manhattan. Um, I expect it will be denied. I thought it was going to be denied anyways, Dustin, when we covered it last week. But now that the prosecution has created a, a substantive uh, retort to the ask, yeah. it's even more so likely yet yeah, that this is going to be shut down for a third time. And if these... Phone records that the prosecutors are now putting in play here just to uh, defend the, the ask for bond again. It could have been right. used at the, the merit trial. All of this stuff, everything he's doing right now, Dustin, pre-trial, can and likely will be used against him in May. Damn. Uh, oh, yeah. In May of 2025. Mm -hmm. Why would you even be trying to strategize illegally like this behind bars? If you have money and things are far reaching like that, get it done. Mm -hmm. Like, that's my point. If you, I don't want, I'm not encouraging anybody to commit a crime here, but I understand him trying to make an effort to make things go in his favor. Why are you in jail paying niggas like Kalina Harper? Yeah. Who no one gives a damn about what she has to say. She's already shown her ass years ago and got thrown off of love and hip hop. Uh -huh. Okay. She proved herself to be a liar back then. Why her? That's what I'm saying. If anything, like, why are they, they taking these sloppy, yeah. you know, swipes and attempts at, at some sort of, I, I just don't get it. It's just way too sloppy. And that part is insulting. In addition to the disgusting, heinous nature of the shit that he's done. The fact that you are just sloppily trying to pull the wool over these people's eyes is crazy to me. Yeah, so, so we're talking about a compound offense, right? We're talking about the underlying charges of racketeering, sex abuse, and all of that, right? Horrible, heinous. Mm -hmm. Then we're talking mm -hmm. about, like Dustin's naming, the sloppiness of it all. And then I'm going to add this reprehensible parental play here. Yeah, yeah. It, whether you're guilty or innocent, my child shall not know about it. My Ebony, say it as a mother. Say it, Ebony, as a mother. Look, I'm sitting me, here. Mother? Put <laughs> your ass down in the corner. Let one folks, you ain't one folks business. I wish the fuck you would. Girl, I'll snatch you. Plus, mama used to do it. Call the phone company and cut your shit off. Okay. You know she's still paying the bill. You know what he is. Call cellular so quick. <laughs> That's right. You singular? A singular wireless. Hell yeah. Well, right. no. Don't worry about it. All right. Um, That's old school, baby. Like you yes. got to be grown to know about yes, sinking yes, a while. It's yes. three after seven p.m. Yes. Yeah. But listen. <laughs> uh, um, so your friend, your friend, I'm going to call her out. Your friend, Miss Natalie, 
we were just, uh-oh hey natalie baby natalie baby so a few weeks ago and nat was just trying to be funny and she was like oh child mm-hmm. you know i would love to be on this puff jury you know what we got to do it's about time for me to get called for jury <laughs> and she <or> tried to, <laughs> and try to be messy you know how she did uh-huh <laughs> Same only. I said, okay, I said, keep playing and be real careful what you wish for. I said, because yep. no, if you or whoever is selected to serve on this puff trial uh jury, you 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 know your life is not gonna be yours for a good two to six months. And this was before we knew what we know now, Dustin. I said, you know it's mm-hmm. likely that whoever is selected to serve on that jury will be sequestered. I said, Oh, that means you're gonna be literally taken. Into likely a hotel room. Right? No phone. Yes, be made to live there for the entire duration of the trial. Um, mm-hmm. And the reason why is this kind of shit right here. They want to try to ensure as best as they can, they being the federal government, that you are being um, sheltered and protected mm-hmm. from any influences whatsoever. They don't want you watching the news. They don't yep. want you reading the newspapers. They certainly don't want you exposed to social media and they don't want yep. you talking to the people in your home and neighborhood and community. In fact, they don't really want you talking to the other jurors. Yeah. But when you're talking about these high profile cases, I get it. We all want tea. We all want mess. But um, when you are selected to serve on the juries of cases like this, you better ask the jurors to serve on OJ and OJ's trial last year. How about that? Year. Yeah. So that's a year of being away from your family, your job. Many people lost their jobs. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm just mm-hmm. dangerous because a lot of jurors don't know about this life. When you are selected to, and it's a very important to do your civic obligation of jury service, but don't be running to these high profile trials like that thinking it's going to be all fun and games and entertainment. There's a real yeah. consequence to serving on these juries and, and the likely scenario is that you will be sequestered. And um, I just want to give y'all a little factoid, a little history nugget. It didn't originate here, but one of the great examples of where jury se- uh, sequestration was a fifty, mm-hmm. um, of course, is in the case of John Gotti. Now we know they used to call him uh, before uh, they they applied it to, you know, who is about to be back in the White House. That Teflon Don, like uh-huh. they, ca- they, they that's what they used to call John Gotti because he kept getting charges, kept getting hemmed up, and kept on beating him, kept on getting not yep. guilty, not guilty, not guilty. Well, turns out he was getting not guilty, likely. Because the jurors were being reached. They were being, uh, quote, gotten to. They were being enticed, uh, it, persuaded to find him. Yeah. They were being influenced. Yes. Absolutely, period. And so after the feds got wind of it, they started sequestering the juries. And all of a sudden, John Gotti, who ultimately was charged with five counts of murder, conspiracy to commit murder, racketeering, obstruction of justice, tax evasion, gambling, extortion, et cetera. He was finally found guilty in 92 of all 13 charges. Now, this is after he was found not guilty of everything, and all of a sudden you found totally fucking guilty. What's the difference, Dustin? The jury... And you know what it is. The jury, mm-hmm. the jury was protected. So I, I, I'm just saying for the record, don't be surprised when we see this Sean Combs jury when they are sat... In 2025 in May, they will likely be sequestered, especially with accusations from the prosecution already saying he doing this kind of fuck shit. Yeah, that's a lot. And I don't want no parts, baby. So, Natalie, you on your own with that one. I don't want nothing to do with it. Let Natalie do it. Okay, no problem. (laughs) Yeah. And don't worry. By the time I told her all this tea, she was like, no, I'm good. Let let me catch it on Spectrum One. I ain't going to lie. Is it just me, Dustin? I actually find myself really enjoying Spectrum One news these days. I have always New York One, Spectrum One. I've yeah. always loved all that that local news channel. My sister was just harassing me the other day, telling me I was old for enjoying. I have always loved New York. The best segments. You ain't alone. Eve. Okay. Now moving on, this one a lot of y'all are um, excited to see. Uh, although you know the underlying facts here are, are, are tragic. We talking about the assassination of the the great legendary Malcolm X. Uh, but many of us are happy to see Malcolm's legacy. His daughters um, are bringing suit. Are they bringing a civil lawsuit against the CIA, FBI, New York Police Department for the wrongful killing, the assassination and murder of their father, Malcolm X. Um, by lead attorney Ben Crump, shout out to uh, Black America's attorney general, Brother Crump. Uh, he's he's filing dust on a $100 million lawsuit. 
uh, against all of those entities, CIA, FBI, NYPD, and more, saying that they knew information that they did not reveal, saying that this is the biggest fact that's new here, that there were undercover officers from many of those agencies, Dustin, mm. the room. And when I say in the room, was it 165th Street yeah. in Manhattan where Malcolm was shot, killed, and assassinated that day in February of 1965? This new lawsuit, Dustin, says that there were undercover officers in that ballroom when Malcolm was killed and they did nothing to protect him. They knew about it. Yeah, they knew about it. They knew it was going to happen. And they sat on their hands as this black American civil rights leader, an icon of people and human rights, was murdered and assassinated. Yeah, I just hope they hurry up. Yeah. Very nervous about this um, litigation extending into the new administration. Uh, yeah. And I and I wonder why with that it coming up so quick, closely, they waited until now yeah. to kind of pull the trigger on this. But I wish them all the success. Yeah. And that's a that's a question a lot of people are asking. Right. Why now? Because at least since. So let's go back to history for those um, not as familiar um, back in 2021, which wasn't that long ago, but it's been a few years. Um, two of the men who were um, originally prosecuted for Malcolm's murder were exonerated. OK, so back in mm -hmm. 2021. Two of the three men uh, convicted of Malcolm's murder were exonerated after investigators uh, got more information, revisited the case. Uh, turns out, shock, shock, shock. People were lying and withholding evidence. Um, if you want to see <laughs> details about this, check out Netflix has a pretty good doc, Who Killed Malcolm X? Um, mm -hmm. So we've known more than we used to know about the murder and assassination of Brother Malcolm for a few years now, right, is the point. Well, as Brother Brink Crump says in the press conference last week, the last three years since um, Brother Crump and his firm have taken on the role of uh, bringing this lawsuit and investigating. Because here's the thing. when you're is, let, Let's be clear, jurors. This is a civil litigation effort. Mm -hmm. This is not the criminal piece. That's mm -hmm. done with, more or less. This is a civil litigation piece that will hopefully bring $100 million dollars to the daughters of Malcolm um, for their pain and suffering, okay? And for the wrongdoing of the biggest federal law enforcement entities in our nation, the CIA, That's right. the FBI, and NYPD. And so then Crump is saying, why now, Dustin? He's saying, well, this is how long it took for us to get all the information we needed to properly be able to bring the legal arguments we're going to need to be able to convincingly make to get the judgment that we need, which is lying. Mm -hmm. Lying. Mm -hmm. That's your point, right? And this is, again, where elections have consequences, where because the new attorney general, heaven forbid, is not going to be uh, Mayor Garland no more. It might, heaven forbid if Donald Trump gets his way as of today, it's going to be uh, Matt Gates Now, Mm -hmm. Republicans are saying it might he won't get confirmed, but shit, we don't know. It'd be some crazy, unforeseen shit going down in Trump administrations, and we know this. So it can, yeah. Like, and even if it's not Matt Gates, it's gonna be somebody whack. Okay, yeah. It's gonna be whack as hell, and that individual will be non-cooperative and horrible as fuck to work with as it relates to seeking justice for the assassination, murder, and killing of Malcolm X. That's what we know. Yeah. Absolutely. So I will Godspeed quite literally. literally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, quite literally. Um, so we will see, of course, we will follow this. Um, yeah. Um, I have had the privilege, Dustin. Um, and you probably ran into her at my Bet on Black book party. Um okay. Yasa Shabazz, um, one of my mm -hmm. beautiful, brilliant daughters. Doctor, excuse me, let me let me get myself motherfucking together. Put a handle on it. Okay, let me okay. respect on my sister's name. Okay. Dr. Ilyasa Shabazz um, is, is a young lady uh, I've become um, blessed to be friendly with. Um, powerful sister, brilliant professor, um, yeah. wonderful, wonderful community leader, um, along with her sisters. And my God, I really, really want justice for them. It is the very least. I'm talking about the for sure. least um, that they deserve uh, because they were there. They were there in the audience, you know, uh, yep. Betty, uh, their mother, uh, Dr. Betty Shabazz was pregnant, uh, yep. twins and the other, I mean, my, my God, I mean, can you imagine your whole life 
never even having the ability to be in real relationship with your father because the government, forget, yeah, of course, there was the nation and there was this and there was that, but also the United States federal government. Being complicit. Their hand. Come on now. And this is a res- this is something that you keep hearing about. This is not like it was an isolated uh, um, conversation, right? Amongst just them and their and their family and friends, Mm-mm. people are talking about the assassination of Malcolm X all over the world. There's been a film. There's been you know so many things. So they're constantly slapped in the face with a reminder of this horrific moment. Yeah. So. Pay them. Run all the money. It should be way more than a hundred million dollars any motherfucking way. Yeah. Run. And it might and, and it might be. Um, yeah, and it, to your point, yeah. you know, you can't go anywhere in the world without hearing about it. And it's gonna feel like a fucking slap in the face, you know, if you are yeah. you know, the progeny, you are the daughters of, you are the living legacy um of, of the iconic Malcolm X. Yeah, it, it justice must be served. Like we we cannot yeah. just act as if. Um, and I'm really, really glad to see. I don't I don't care. And that's the beauty of the federal government um, Mm -hmm. having a statute of limitations on murder. Mm -hmm. This is Mm -hmm. like most other crimes. This would have been prohibited by statute of limitations. Oh, it's been 30 years, been 40 years, been 50 years, been 60 years. I don't give a fuck. Murder has no statute of limitations. So we will. For now. So for now, because because there is no such thing as (laughs) that's 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 going to be a a, a life quote of holding court. Um, (laughs) And so for now. Let's proceed accordingly. Who's also proceeding accordingly? And we're kind of covering this story, jurors, in advance of, because I do see in short order some litigation is probably going to come of this next case from one side or the other or both. I'm talking about okay. Myel Organics. Um, y'all know it's a hair care company, a beauty brand, black founded for the uh, majority of its existence, black owned. It has Mm -hmm. recently been sold to Procter & Gamble. We'll get to that nuance in a second. Uh, But the the company, Dustin, uh, Myel Organics, is under fire, at least on social media. Um, Every YouTube content creator, um, you know, that's really in this space. Not every. Let me not say that. But let me say many. Let me say many. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. Mm Create videos alleging that now the Myel Organics products, especially, um, I believe, one of the scalp oils, is causing their hair to fall out and is causing damage um, to their hair. Now, many of them are saying that this only started once the Myel products were sold to Procter & Gamble. They're suggesting that there's been some changes in the formula, yada, 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 yada. Now, let's be clear. The company itself has denied, denied, denied these accusations. Myel is saying that there has been no change in formula. There has been no change in products. Um, But... The, the the onslaught continues, Dustin. One customer uh, by the name of Courtney Brown says that she was using the Mayel products as early as 2016. Um, and she says that recently she noticed a whole lot of her hair falling out in clumps. If y'all look at the videos online, you'll see people um, at least purporting to show examples of this. Another customer mm-hmm. named jo- Jade Robertson told um, an outlet that she began using the Rosemary and Mint collection back in 2022. And she was noticing that her edges were thinning out. Um, some people are saying that's not true. That's not been their experience. People are going back and forth on the Internet saying, oh, we'll use it over time. You'll see. Yada, 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 yada. Um, here's, here's what I say about it. Number one, it's only going to be so long that a critical mass of all <clears throat> content creators, Dustin, can go forth with proclamations that are this damning. Um before there's going to be some talk by my my L and or Pro- yeah. Campbell, it said yeah. we need to threaten litigation around slander and libel. Yeah, as they should. Now, of course, we know because y'all are jurors and y'all listen to holding court. The perfect defense to slander or libel is it's the truth. So, mm-hmm. so what could happen? What I foresee happening, Dustin is a scenario where the litigation is activated on either the part, like I said, of the company, my L itself and Parker and Gamble to say, the, the fuck y'all say, you know, he, bam, here's an injunction to stop the creation of content that is slandering our product. And mm-hmm. or in response to that potential litigation, customers are saying, well, it's not slander if it's true. It's not mm-hmm. if it's true. And we can prove that we have been harmed by the, the, the so-called new iteration of the product. 
So let me back up, Dustin. Have you seen or heard any of this on the social media streets? I've seen a lot. It's been all over the place. And as a person who loves to see black businesses win and, you know, see high levels of success, it was heartbreaking for me to see those are my L products and, and that that couple. They've been visible yeah. in the media. Um, people are proud of that brand and what it has done. And it had gotten great reviews. So to see this 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 drastic uptick and negative shit that people had to say about it and CP basically disparaging this business. If those claims are unfounded, that's fucked up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if they are if they are um, legitimate claims, then something like this will force the truth to come out on either side, just like you said. I agree with that. And so that is why this is good motion for this situation. Let's get to the truth and let the truth come on out. Let the truth yeah. come on out and then we can deal with it accordingly. If there's an issue with the product, okay, well, then maybe this could be a point of correction. If there's no issue with the product and this is just some bullshit, then people need to shut the fuck up. Um, now, That's right. there's, a, there's a subtextual conversation mm -hmm. though, Dustin, which is saying that some of this, if not all of this, backlash, negative talk about my L, uh -huh. who coincidentally coincide after the black founded company has sold to a white mainstream Procter and Gamble. And mm -hmm. people are saying that this was similar to what happened with the Honeypot company, which mm -hmm. you know, was mm -hmm. I founded creators of feminine hygiene products. Shout out to Honeypot. I actually um, during my postpartum was, you know, thank God for Honey Pot. I'm going to just leave it there. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm going to just leave it right. Yeah. Um, but but happy to have more conversation if you guys want to with Honey Pot. <laughs> um, but that's a lot of people were, were upset with Honey Pot when they sold to uh, a mainstream uh, distributor, um, mm -hmm. publicly traded company. And then some of us are old enough to remember when this same kind of went down, went down with Lisa Price and Carol mm -hmm. Um. So if you're you're not tracking what I'm laying out here is that there has been a historical pattern, even in recent years, of when black founded, originally black owned companies get to the point in their journey where they are acquired by, where they sell to huge mainstream white companies, whether it's Procter and Gamble, mm -hmm. L'Oreal, um, you name it. General Mills, General, you know, anyway, yeah. Whatever. Um, there is a portion, Dustin, of black community and culture that says, well, that is now you've sold out. Now you have mm -hmm. abandoned um, the very thematic cultural buy in that was attractive to us as consumers. And some people say this might be a form of punishment. This is the, the, the fan base and the consumer base attempting to punish, in this case, Mael. Um, for quote selling out, I want to just get your take before we go further on that narrative. That's the problem. First of all, if they if 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 these products have not changed in their formula and are not negatively impacting these customers, but as a as because customers are are upset that she sold the company, mm -hmm. you've decided to now trash the products and create a negative review. That's fucked up. If because. It's not your place to determine what business decision is the best for the owner of a company as the consumer, right? It's not as if the products did really change. If they actually changed, that's different. Of course, you should speak out about the change and, and what you've seen, but it's not your place. We see this a lot um, with on, on television with some of the reality shows and the fans um, creating situations through conversations that impact the, the integrity of the show, impact the outcome of these television shows, impact the cast members' lives very negatively um, due to simply the fans having an opinion. And I think that's terrible. Mm -hmm. when, a, when the opinion of a fan or consumer had, can impact real lives this way, that's a problem. If these customers are upset because she sold her company, they, they, not she, because they sold their company, mm -hmm. That is a problem to me. And I think it's fucked up that they would go to links this, f you know, far and extreme in nature mm -hmm. to make a point that they didn't have in the first place. You're in your feelings because she sold her company to elevate. That's ridiculous. Right. And so creating, you know, these stories out of the blue, it's just really is grossly unfair. And, and that's really dark to me, really dark. So I think it's dark and I think we need to name what's dark about it. I think it's time mm -hmm. to start, especially might as well. No, no, no time like the present, right? Yeah. And uh, since we've just, you know, kind of landed where we've landed, politically speaking, 
Let's yeah. put all the shit on the table as far as I'm concerned. So if, if we are at a place as a culture, as black folk, we are at a place where we want to see everybody struggle because we feel like we struggling. We need to just say that. I think. Then get away from me. Well, I hear you. But but, but first, <laughs> we got to say it and stand in it and stand on. Say it plain. Say it plain mm-hmm. and stand on the business, as, as y'all like to say. Say, mm-hmm. feel away. Because cause why would you be in your feelings? See, we got the name, the quiet part, Dustin. Why would you mm-hmm. have feelings that a black woman, in this case, a black couple, in the case of Lisa Price, a black uh, woman, in the case, mm-hmm. was it mixed chicks um, as well? Oh, yeah, I remember mixed chicks, the hair products, yeah. People were mad when they told, mm-hmm. you know, when they when they were acquired, not real, either not realizing or not caring or maybe being jealous or envious. See, I'm going to go ahead and name all of that them. part. Okay. That at some point, some of these black businesses don't stop in the kitchen sink. Some of these mm-hmm. black businesses don't stop in grandmama's basement. Some of these mm-hmm. black businesses really do stand against the odds and yeah. feed at a higher level that put them in position for multi-million billion dollar acquisition deals. Yep. Reality is, no, most of us don't get there. Most of us don't make it there, but some of us do. Well, I'm mm-hmm. trying to suspect, Dustin Ross, that there is a part of the culture that resents that level of exceptionalism. I do. Mm-hmm. I do. And, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying everybody. And again, if the product is fucked up, we should name that. It'll come out in the wash. But if it's not. Right. If it's not that, and this is folks feeling a way because they feel that the couple uh, behind Myel Organics, or they feel that Lisa Price, or they feel that the lady uh, Beatrice of, of Honeypot need to mm-hmm. a posture of struggle. Because let's be clear, don't think any of these fucking black companies are just out here getting it easy. Even the ones that are great, even the ones that y'all are, are recognizable and highly visible. There is so much uphill battle, y'all. There is so few investment dollars available to black owned businesses i mean the numbers will blow your mind as to yeah. little capital is accessible and available to black owned businesses so the fact that these companies honeypot mael mixed chicks what have you have overcome all odds to be even in position for acquisition they get acquired and then you've got a narrative that now says oh well you know what that happens the, the very thing that propelled it into uh, desirability goes away. Yeah. What do you think happens to black businesses, y'all? They stop yeah. acquired. They stay in a struggle posture. Oh, uh, because you dumb motherfuckers and your feelings about something that has nothing to do with you. Yeah. That's why. So um, I, I think we just got to have an honest conversation. I think some of us feel a little bit better. When if we struggle and we want everybody else to fucking struggle right along with us. And when we feel like you, you're doing a little too well, we feel mm-hmm. like you beat a, a few too many odds. We want to punish you. Call it out. Call it out. I I know we're in a time crunch, but short story. Please. So you know I'm the I'm a correspondent over at Kingdom Reign Entertainment with Carlos King. So I was introduced to his audience by him having me on his show, asking my opinion about different reality shows that we would talk about, right? Where I give my unfiltered opinion. Mm-hmm. Once they hired me. To, inst- to to interview the cast, I think there was an expectation from the audience that I would have a gotcha moment with some of the talent when we would have our conversations or I would create an environment where I'm kind of nailing them to the wall to, to, to hold them accountable or something. That's not the intention of that interview space. The interview space is to get their take, have them have a, a, a an open environment to share their- Expanded conversation. Yeah. Expanded conversation. So I started to see a lot of comments and a lot of would not even see comments. I would get messages from fans of the Love and Marriage shows yeah. who would call me a sellout, mm. say that I had um, I was drinking Carlos's Kool Aid and just really going far. Uh, be, with some uh, because, and let me just I'm gonna say the thing. You probably would say <laughs> it just because it's you, but I'm gonna <sighs> for you. All because this particular black man of enormous exceptional talent, even in our industry has been elevated to a position that honors his worth just a bit. Just a bit. Um, no, 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 let me say this. Just a bit. 
because he's no longer operating in the posture that most of us have to operate in, which is just doing some shit to do it. Nothing wrong with it. But because mm-hmm. you had finally, fi- heavy on finally, by the way, mm-hmm. been mm-hmm. elevated to the posture of let me just honor the value here a bit. Okay. Now there's some, some, something goes like this, right? Something's rubbing the wrong way for certain viewers who can't conceptualize of a scenario where somebody can stay in their integrity, stay in their journalistic curiosity, stay in their humor, stay in their entertainment value, and, and just get a little bit of compensation for what the fuck they do. That's I'm the secret. problem. I'm done with it. I'm- no, you, you're, you're right on the nose yeah. with this because I came back on Carlos's channel in a space to give my opinion. He asked me about some stuff with another show. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we had a very spirited conversation that people loved. And there were still people in the see this how I know he kissing Carlos ass and he done sold out because he can do this, he can do that. So finally, there was a woman, I had never met her before in my life, complete stranger, Mm -hmm. who went all the way to Facebook right facebook. to was, send me a message you went all the way to 2014 all the way to facebook okay to send me a message that i saw on accident because i was holding my phone in my hand mm-hmm. and the notification came through and i was touching my phone to do something else so i never would have even seen this message but it took me directly to her message mm-hmm. right i'm gonna sell out all this other stuff so i cussed her ass out good i hadn't planned on seeing the message cussed her completely out who the fuck are you to even ask me anything about anything that I'm doing. You are a complete fucking stranger and you're completely out of line. Yeah, I'm telling y'all. I didn't, I didn't, I, I was caught off guard. didn't even anticipate seeing the message. So I think that that is akin to what we're discussing I here, right? I did Which is people taking liberties that they do not have and creating space for themselves that doesn't exist. Mind your motherfucking business and don't go to links like this. And, 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 and let me stand y'all in the possibility that when you see stuff happening like this, people being acquired by billion dollar publicly traded corporation, Dustin being hired, promoted in a in a in a uh, realized capacity as an actual right. respondent on the platform with right. when, instead of standing in the posture of sell out jealousy, stand in the posture of when I watch God do it for them, maybe God will do it for me. How about that part, man? What, what if you? What if we did a better job? As and I'm not saying every black person because there's a lot of black folks class. No, okay, right. Black folks. We talking to them other motherfuckers. But you other motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. I don't need to really stand in the possibility of 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 some other black person's ascension not being a threat, but being the being the exact catalyst for what is possible for you and yours. And I think mm-hmm. if we did a little more of that or a lot more of that, I just think we would be positioned differently. I'm a, and, I, and I mean that broadly. I mean that economically. Yeah. I mean that politically. I mean that uh, geographically. I mean that culturally. Yeah. And you're on point yeah, all the way around. I'm going to stop that. there with it because you know how I all the way around with it. But I'm going to stop there. We should do a hater episode yeah, yeah. where we just cuss all the haters out for for the whole episode. Talk about the motherfuckers that get on our nerves mm-hmm. and just go in. We need to do a hater episode once a season. And if y'all realize yeah. how offensive the smear suggestion that people were selling out for the pennies on the dollar that y'all are suggesting, y'all wouldn't even say that dumb ass shit. Yeah, especially not to me. Because if I see it. I ignore y'all, but if I fi- if you find your way to me and my sideline, you're gonna have to answer for what you said. I don't give a fuck who you are. Yeah. So there's that. There's that. Yeah, y'all better stop running up on Dustin Ross. But final note to um buttoning up the um my all of it all. With some of y'all do that, when some of y'all stand in that jealous undermining, I'm gonna make y'all pay for selling out whatever fake bullshit y'all came up with. Yeah. <laughs> the point of all businesses, black owned or otherwise is not to build the business to the point of acquisition. Hello. Hello. When y'all do that, y'all do two things. You make it impossible for any other black business to ascend because you are signaling to the acquisition class of it all that, oh, don't, don't, don't ever put no money into no black business. Don't ever put no money into, um, you know, black um, capital because... Right. Um, 
once you buy it, it ain't gonna be worth shit because the fan base go right. pull the, the 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 very uh consumer base that they bought to the table will disappear. Yeah, you literally undermine the and devalue. What a, yes. And again, just if, if if you just broke and you want everybody else to be broke with you, I'd rather you just say that. Right. So I know who to ignore. That's it. Or who to say, get thee behind me. All right. Okay. Well, uh, listen, that's going to be it for this week's episode. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a lot. Okay, you listen again and break it down. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna to that. That's right. We're gonna end on if you if you want to if you want everybody on the struggle bus, which you just say that, and if you don't give a yeah. fuck about your kids, are you ready to take them down? Which you just say that. Just say that too, so they can get away from you. God bless them children. God bless the children that had it all. Okay, y'all. Hello. <laughs> y'all, next time, same place, same same situation here at Holden Court. We will be back with a new episode. We will be back in session. You know, it's near the holidays, Justin Ross, so yes, it is. what to do in the meantime. Read your terms and conditions, and also, ho, ho, ho. I want you to do that, too. It's the sea. Tis the season. Get you a little bit for the holidays. That's it. You know. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to chew on that. Holding Court is produced by Uppity Productions. Host and executive producers here, Ebony K. Williams, yours truly, and the Dustin Ross. Executive producer in Dossie McCraw. Our senior producer, Ashley Hobbs. Creative consultant, Jay Kleinberg. Follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any and everywhere you get your podcasts.